Hi everyone and back to Day Lectura. Today I'm going to cover a series called Starting with the Classics. Um, and this is for those of us who would like to study those on our own but we don't know how to go about it. Much of the language in those books are kind of above what we're used to. That was my situation. I was never exposed to that in school so I had to do it on my own. So through my research I have found certain ways to um, work my way through the classics and I think maybe because I had younger children at the time that I learned to start with the children's version that's how I began to learn the classics and gradually I worked my way up so if you have a child's version you're dealing with what's called the grammar level and then you learn you're just learning the what the who that's going to give you a basic framework for the story itself once you have the storyline um, from, you can work your way up from there. Then you're going to go to the next level, which would be like, let's say, a middle grade, early high school level. That's going to give you more of the why, a little more context. It's fleshing it out a little bit for you. I'll be reading you an excerpt uh, from that uh, sample. And then lastly, you would get into the adult level or like the middle level was more of a logic level. The adult level is more of a rhetoric level. So now that it's been completely fleshed out and you have the what and the who and the why, you're more able to um, reflect on it and give your own input. So now you have a whole um, experience happening there. So let me start with a children's version and I've chosen um, the time period of ancient Greece. So um, the very well-known stories would be the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer. The Iliad being the beginning and this talks about the Trojan War when one of the Trojans, Paris, kidnapped the wife of one of the Greeks. The woman's name was Helen and I believe she was the wife of King Menelaus. So here is what I would consider a children's version. Um, also, you could have a middle, middle grade student read this as well on their own. So it could, it could cover for both. This is a graphic novel adaptation by Gareth Hines. And it's published by Candlewick Press. And I don't know the year. I'll figure that out and I'll put it on the bottom of the, of the, um, below the video for you. So right now, just let me read you an excerpt of when Hector, who's the brother of Paris, and he's a great warrior, he's just finished talking to his wife and holding his infant son and saying goodbye to his wife and telling her to be brave. And just as that ends, Paris comes in to join his brother so they can go back out into battle against the Greeks. All right, so here is... On this page is what I'm going to read you of that transaction, okay? So here comes Paris. Brother, have I been too slow? Hector, no man would fault the speed of your legs, Paris, or the strength of your arm in battle, but you give, you give way too easily. Lose your will. My heart aches when I hear the men speak of you with contempt. I pray we'll have a chance to restore your name, to drive the Achaeans from our land, and in our hall, if Zeus permits us, to set before the gods our wine bowl of deliverance. So Hector and Paris returned to battle, but Andromache and all the women of Troy mourned for Hector, sure that he must die at the hands of the Achaeans. And this, let me take out my little marker here. This is what you'll see when you read that little snippet. I'm a very visual person. So graphic novels speak to my heart. <laughs> and if I ever find a graphic novel of a classic, I get it. If I find a ch children's version of a classic, I get it. So I've got a few of those. Now, we're gonna head to, so that was like a grammar level, beginning level, the why and the who. This is now the middle level, or what we'd call the, the logic level. This would be a middle grade book, perhaps maybe early high school as well. So this is, um, an edition of the Iliad by Homer, translated by Samuel Butler, and he's translated other um, classics for children. And this is by Memoria Press. So I'm going to read you that same episode from this book. 
Paris did not remain long in his house. He donned his goodly armor, overlaid with bronze, and hasted through the city as fast as his feet could take him. As a horse, stabled and full-fed, breaks loose and gallops gloriously over the plain to the place where he's wont to bathe in the fair flowing river, he holds his head high and his mane streams upon his shoulders as he exults in his strength and flies like the wind to the haunts and feeding ground of the mares. Even so went forth Paris from high Pergamus, gleaming like sunlight in his armor, and he laughed aloud as he sped swiftly on his way. Forthwith he came upon his brother Hector, who was then turning away from the place where he had held converse with his wife, and he was himself the first to speak. Sir, said he, I fear that I have kept you waiting when you are in haste and have not come as quickly as you bade me. My good brother, answered Hector, you fight bravely, and no, good, and no man with any justice can make light of your doings in battle. But you are careless and willfully remiss. It grieves me to the heart to hear the ill that the Trojans speak about you, for they have suffered much on your account. Let us be going, and we will make things right hereafter. Should Zeus vouch of us to set the cup of our deliverance before the ever-living gods of heaven in our own homes, when we have chased the Achaeans from Troy? So now you see how that's fleshed out a little bit more. You've got more context happening. Now, as an adult, you could even start from this level as well. Now we're going to do the grown-up level, or what would be considered that third level, the rhetoric level. This is something that um, a high schooler with very good reading skills could read on their own or a college student. Okay, this translation of the Iliad is translated by Robert Fagels. It's an edition by Penguin Classics Deluxe. And this is what it looks like. And the Penguin Classics Deluxe are a beautiful um, series of books that I'm collecting. Um, they're, just, they're just beautifully done. I'll show you more in future videos. All right, so I'm gonna go to that same place in this book, now you'll see what it originally sounds like. And Fagels is considered a little bit easier than the next translation that I'm gonna to read to you. So here's the one by Robert Fagels. Nor did Paris linger long in his vaulted halls. Soon he buckled on his elegant gleaming bronze. He rushed through Troy, sure in his racing stride, as a stallion full fed at the manger, stalled too long. Breaking free from his tether, gallops down the plain, out for his favorite plunge in a river's cool currents, thundering in his pride, his head flung back, his mane streaming over his shoulders, sure and sleek in his glory, knees racing him on to the fields and stallion haunts he loves. So down from Pergamus heights came Paris, son of Priam, glittering in his armor like the sun astride the skies, exultant, laughing aloud, his fast feet sped him on. Quickly, he overtook his brother, noble Hector, still lingering, slow to turn from the spot where he had just confided in his wife. Magnificent Paris spoke first. Dear brother, look at me, holding you back in all your speed, dragging my feet, coming to you so late, and you told me to be quick. A flash of his helmet as Hector shot back. Impossible man. How could anyone fair and just underrate your work in battle? You're a good soldier, but you hang back of your own accord, refuse to fight. And that, that's why the heart inside me aches when I hear our Trojans heap contempt on you. The men who bear such struggles, all for you. Come, now for attack. We'll set all this to right someday. If Zeus will ever let us raise the wine bowl of freedom high in our halls, high to the gods of cloud and sky who live forever, once we drive these Argives, geared for battle, out of Troy. Okay, that's the Robert Fagels translation. Now the last one, same level of reading. And this particular translation is by Richard, excuse me, Richmond Lattimore. The original Greek for the Iliad and the Odyssey has a certain meter to it, a certain uh, pace in the reading. And it's said that Richmond Lattimore was able to bring that into the English translation. So that's what makes this translation so special. I don't know if you're going to hear it as I read it, but um, just enjoy the difference between this one and the one that I just read by Fagels. Same passage. 
But Paris, in turn, did not linger long in his high house, but when he had put on his glorious armor with bronze elaborate, he ran in the confidence of his quick feet through the city. As when one stalled horse, as when some stalled horse, who has been corn-fed at the manger, breaking free of his rope, gallops over the plain in thunder to his accustomed bathing place in a sweet running river, and in the pride of his strength holds high his head, and the mane floats over his shoulders. Sure of his glorious strength, the quick knees carry him to the loved places and the pasture of horses. So from uttermost Pergamus came Paris, the son of Priam, shining in all his armor of war as the sun shines, laughing aloud, and his quick feet carried him. Suddenly thereafter, he came on brilliant Hector, his brother, where he yet lingered before turning away from the place where he had talked with his lady. It was Alexandros the godlike who first spoke to him. Brother, I fear that I have held back your haste by being slow on the way, not coming in time as you commanded me. Then tall Hector of the shining helm spoke to him in answer, strange man, there is no way that one giving judgment in fairness could dishonor your work in battle since you are a strong man but of your own accord you hang back, unwilling. And my heart is grieved in its thought when I hear shameful things spoken about you by the Trojans who undergo hard fighting for your sake. Let us go now. Some day hereafter we will make all right with the immortal gods in the sky, if Zeus ever grant it, setting up to them in our houses the wine bowl of liberty after we have driven out of Troy the strong grieved Achaeans. So there you go. You've listened to four different readings of the same passage, which, by the way, is the end of book six of the Iliad. Instead of having chapters, they have books. And now you can see the difference, how we worked our way up through the different levels and how each added more. You choose the one that you think you can understand the easiest to begin with and never, ever feel self-conscious about having to start at a level far below your own. The important thing is that you understand, therefore you can appreciate as you read more. Thanks for joining me. Bye.